Hi, everyone. This talk is on Intro to EMJS, how to make real-time data visualizations and maps easily. So a little bit about me. I'm Lizzie, as you can tell from the schedule. I'm a self-proclaimed developer avocado. I love Pikachu, People, and PubNub, where I work, and avocados in alliteration, as you can probably tell. So let's go over the agenda. So Egon is built on the PubNub data stream network, so we'll go over what that data stream network is. Then we'll go into making charts and graphs, maps, and some resources you can use to build your own. Quite simply, PubNub is a simple-to-use, publish and subscribe API, which allows devices to publish data in real time, communicating across the world. We have different data centers, so it's low latency, and it keeps your product and app scalable to millions and thousands of people. With over 70 SDKs, you can pick your favorite language, Swift, Go, you name it, and just start building. Okay. So publish and subscribe are the main features that everything is built off of. For publish, devices publish messages into channels that you can create on the fly. For subscribe, devices subscribe to channels, there can be multiple, and receive messages that are published to those channels in less than a quarter of a second from anywhere on the planet. Stream controller is for when you have multiple channels, so you can subscribe to thousands with one API call. Access management. Maybe you want to hide something from someone, from a channel, from a specific user. So you can add some authentication to your app, and it's easily integratable with OAuth, Google, and Facebook authentication. Blocks is our new serverless architecture that makes the network programmable. For example, Maybe you want to trigger something to be done when a message is published to a channel, like sending an email. Okay. So PubNub streams real-time data. Now, what does that mean? That's data in motion. Stocks, weather, sports scars, tweets, location coordinates. It can also stream static data, which is what a content delivery network does. But for if you want to stream images, you limited to the payload size, which is like a JSON key value pair, which is around 32 kilobytes. And you can, of course, do unicast, which is one-to-one, -one, broadcast, which is one-to-all, or multicast, which is one to a set of sources. And unicast sounds like unicorn, so it's fluffy. <laughs> Use cases. Chat is a big one, Twitter Periscope multiplayer games, vehicle location tracking, financial data, collaborative dev tools, like, you know, Balsamic, CodePen, and of course, IoT, Internet of Things. Okay. So let's get down into the code. And don't worry about copying down code. I'll give you the URLs at the end. You can find all the code samples online with the demos, docs, and more. So first, you want to include the CDN with this line, and at the moment it's 4.4.4, or for all the node fans, just npm install pubnub. Initializing your pubnub objects to invoke pubnub operations. You will make your own pubnub app to get your own keys, and these are important so you can distinguish between your project from another's project. Your required parameters are subscribe and publish keys but you have optional ones too, like UID to get like a specific user or a subscriber ID or restore to subscribe client or for when a client reconnects with the last message time token. Publish. This is how you get messages to all your subscribers. So all subscribers of Bicycle One will get this message, latitude and longitude. You can have as many channels as you want they're cheap. Like, say, one for each message if you want. And channels are made on the fly as soon as you type it in. It exists. You can name it anything often related to your app. 
subscribe causes an indirect receiver to get the message, and they choose what channel they listen to. So here, channels is an array of channels because it can subscribe to multiple at a time. Put them handles everything else so that you can focus on your own code. And there are some optional parameters here too, like presence, so you can know who's listening to your channels. And this is all you need to send messages through the network. Now, what if you want to display data from the network? That's where Eon comes in. So what is Eon, or Eon.js, as I call it? Because it's like a JavaScript. It's an open source chart and map framework for real-time data. You can get real-time data from public channels, plotting that in data in graphs, maps, and charts. Maybe donuts, pie, bar, gauge, you name it, it's probably there. It makes it very easy to quickly create your own dashboards and visualizations with feature-rich libraries, a variety of chart types, colors, sizes, types, and custom map themes, tiles, and markers. It works across platforms and devices like iOS and Android, which we will cover later. Why visualization with DC.js matters. DC.js is the most popular open source library. And let's start with SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics. This is a web standard that is very fast, even on mobile, and it's well supported everywhere. It's a way of rendering resolution independent objects in the browser. On top of SVG is DC, that is basically the standard for interactive visualizations. It controls SVG using JavaScript and allows you to bind arbitrary data to the document object model. And then you can apply data-driven transformations to the document. It's extremely fast, supporting large data sets and dynamic behaviors for interaction and animation. What does hardware accelerated mean? You can offload CSS features to the graphics processing unit or GPU for better rendering performance in the browser. On top of D3 is C3, and that is where you build everything yourself, extending D3 to, by giving you more classes to each element, letting you define a custom style by the class. These include bar graphs, donuts, and more. Eon is built on C3, which is a wrapper for D3. So, what's the difference? Eon connects C3 charts and utilizes Mapbox's map widget to real-time streams of data, meaning you can collect, detect, and publish data in real time to your updating charts, maps, graphs, and more. And it's super easy. Let's get started. First, we'll publish data to a public channel, sort of like what we did before. Then we'll receive that data and display the chart and go over the history API, which is how you can get old data before you subscribe to the channel. You can have multiple graphs for multiple data. And of course, make it pretty. Make it your own. Okay. Initializing a public object. Let's build a small Node.js script that will run on the command line or on your server. In Node, just include require and create a new public object, as we did before. Now, we can publish some data. Here, we need the Eon keyword. And the Eon sub-object sub -object is set to 90, humidity to 90. It's probably being streamed from an IoT device. And yes, publishing data is really that simple. The publish function will modify this number by a random amount here. So this is another way of publishing data that's fake. And it, it will go up or down by about 0.5. Then this function will be called every 2,000 seconds with set interval publish 2,000. To draw the graphics, this is where Eon comes in. We import Eon.js, and this version number can change, but you can find that at github.com slash pubnub slash eon slash releases, which will be at the end of the presentation. Important eon.css gives you some convenient and nice default styling. Now, to publish the data to your HTML page, all you need to do is create an empty div with an ID like so. Here, it's called search. Okay. Now, 
let's connect to PubNub with another PubNub object. The chart just needs to listen for the data to display it. Call egon.chart down here below, passing it these parameters. Well, the channel's array, so it's listening to multiple, and then you publish to the PubNub connection, and you generate it by binding it to the CSS selector. You're referring to your chart ID in the HTML file, in the empty div. And this is what you get in the browser. Okay. Now, maybe you want some old data from before you subscribed, as the browser results only shows new data from when you subscribed. Then, you use the history API, which is also known as storage and playback. Simply set history to true. Gosh, that's easy. The default number of data points that you receive from this history API is 10, but you can always set your own with another count. This means that when the chart loads, you'll see old data. And if you look at the timestamps, yep, that's data from before we open the browser. Now, let's say you want to make a Twitter visualization of tweets. There's a public Twitter stream that takes in 50 tweets per second with a set channel and set subscribe key. So instead of using your own subscribe key and your own channel that you make, you would use pubnub Twitter and this specific subscribe key. Here, in the callback, process data is called after retrieving some of the previous data from the stream. Here, you'll get some specific tweets. You'll create an array of words that you want to search for. If a tweet you pull in from the Twitter stream contains that word, like Trump, Donald Trump, Democrats, Republicans, you can also search hashtags, hashtag Trump, I don't know. Then we will pull it in here, and we'll process that data. If it's empty, we return. If they, it contains some of the words in our array, we will convert it to lowercase and increment counts. So that each time each tweet contains the word that we're looking for, we have counts of that to display in a bar graph or pie or whatever. And this is the publish. So we have number of politics words, which is each time a tweet contains a word we were looking for, and the total number. Okay. Now, let's try publishing multiple values. Here, in our Eon object, the keys are different streams, which Eon is able to distinguish and differentiate between, and the corresponding values, which are random numbers that change whenever data is published. So it's big data. Not like fake news, but big data. And what's a chart without some pretty colors? Or maybe you want to change the type of chart. Spline and time charts are good for displaying data from an IoT device. Cars, speed, etc. You can also switch it to a bar graph, scatter, pie, or gauge. Eon has you covered. You can set labels, set axes, and how ticks are displayed. This time series chart has ticks along the X axis with hours, minutes, and seconds. And the label is temperature, and it's positioned on the left of the chart, vertically centered. All of this is in C3, so you can add on with more C3 styling. And here, on the right, you can assign different colors and values as they come in. These are different planes coming in from different airports, SFO, Atlanta. This is also using C3. Here, you can also use CC's CSS. Maybe that's more your style. Styling. The that styling, this is how the chart will look. You can play around with it. Maybe you don't want to code. Then Eon Chart Builder might be for you. It's a web tool to create and customize a chart without having to write code. You can input your own data and your own keys, customize the axes, and then have the Eon Chart Builder do it for you based off of that data. And it will generate code for you so you can copy and paste it yourself. And here it is. Chart type. Set the chart type. Set labels and axes. Maybe you want grid lines along axes. Display points. 
maps. Maps are very different from charts and graphs, so we use Mapbox instead of D3. Maps are a very powerful way to display location data from things like planes, buses, taxis, and more. So we'll create a simple map. We'll follow markers along the map as they move, apply the real-time data stream, and of course, make it pretty. So here's some example data. The points are latitude and longitude, and there's a sequence of points. So we can assume that they're kind of moving. Then we call the publish method on our Pubnub Beyond instance with our own channel. Okay. Again, you'll need your own subscribe key. And since it's built on Mapbox, you'll need a Mapbox token and ID. So you can get to mapbox.com slash developers. You call eon.map, set your tokens and IDs, your channels, and your PubNub optics. Okay. Mapbox data source handles the geographic data that makes up a map. Eon maps plot what we want on top of that. These are default markers, so not very attractive. Now, since the markers are moving, we want the map to sort of pan with the data, to move with the data. How will we do that? We'll recenter the map around the data point each time it moves, and each time new data comes in. The message callback here lets you do whatever you want when new data comes in. Here, we'll set the view to be the value of our first data point. Since we're only sending in one at the moment, this is the center, and then eight is the zoom level. It's a good mid-sized difference. Distance. Here, PubNub has a server which publishes SFO data to this channel. So if you want to get in real-time SFO data of planes coming and leaving, you can use SFO flight data. And to customize your own marker, here, whenever the marker function is called, we will return a new rotated marker and use our own icon. Here's an airplane. And set the size. So it can track not just the position, but the direction of vehicles moving. Okay. Bam. Airplanes and markers. Kind of small, but kind of more attractive. And yes, these are planes coming in and out of SFO. To display Eon on iOS, we want to set up a WK web view. This is an object that can be used to embed interactive web content in your app, sort of like an in-app web browser. The WebKit framework, which is how WK WebKit gets the WK, enables developers to create web-enabled native apps that utilize the power and speed of the JavaScript engine that powers Safari. To display Eon on Android, you just create an Android web view any attributes like the width, zoom, and initial scale. You'll also need to enable JavaScript for more complex web pages. I won't go too in-depth into Android and iOS, because this is for JS. But once you have your web view set up, you can simply make your own HTML file, CSS file, and JavaScript. Just like the stock showed you. That is Elon. And here are some resources. Take on home. If you have any questions, support at pumnup.com or support.pumnup.com. And code from this presentation is github.com slash pumnup slash eon dash workshop. Thank you. You can find me on Twitter, Alexa Pika. Thank <laughs> you.